Welcome, 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 one and all, to the 2023 Rock Explorers 5th Grade Podcast. I'm your host, Mr. Cornu, and I've had the privilege of getting to know this group of students from all over the Rochester City School District over the last four weeks and exploring a variety of topics all centered around who we are as members of our community, as members of this school, and just who we are as individuals in life. I'm excited for you to learn about all the topics that we've been studying this summer. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the 2023 Rock Explorers 5th Grade Podcast. Welcome to the first segment of the Rock Explorers 2023 podcast with our fifth graders who are going to introduce themselves. We've got Wilbert Omar. That's here. And so, gentlemen, you're going to talk about our topic from the first week of the program, which was Who Am I as a Player? We talked about a lot of different ways that we play. What are some of your favorite games to play, Wilbert? Call of Duty, Fortnite, and Fall Guys. So those are some video games that you like to play. Uh, Nasir, do you have any board games that you and your family really like to play? Uno, Connect Four, and Tic-Tac-Toe. Nice. And Omar, do you enjoy playing outside? I play uh, Sonic, Roblox. So you like video games like Wilbert does, huh? Mm -hmm. All right, so we talked about the different types of games that we can play in our lives and what kinds of games bring people together. We were also fortunate enough to take a trip uh, on the first week that was awesome. It was our third day of the program. Where did we go, Nasir? To the Strong Museum. That's right, the Strong Museum of Play, which we are so fortunate to have here in Rochester. Uh, Wilbert, what was your favorite thing that we did at the Strong Museum? When, like, we was in, like, that little restaurant with all the money and stuff, serving our customers. So, you, yeah, you guys were playing some pretend, right? Serving food, collecting money, cooking the food. That was, that was a lot of fun. Great. Uh, Omar, what was your favorite thing that we did at the museum? The same thing. You enjoyed that same part? I think it was in the Bernstein Bears section, actually. Awesome. And Nasir, what did you enjoy? I enjoyed a lot of the role-playing part of it, like going to the fake Wegmans and also the bakery dinghy and also the thing in the baby aisle part. It yeah. was very funny. So it sounds to me like you all really had a great time playing pretend, which we don't think about as a game, but really playing pretend is gaming. Um, so that's so cool that you guys enjoyed uh, sort of the role play. I like that you used that word role play uh, portions of the museum. They also have a great new uh, board game section. What were some of the board games that we saw featured outside in the new section? Do you remember? Um. I think um, I, uh, Mono- Mono- Monopoly. Yes, absolutely. Monopoly was one. Any others that you guys remember? The Game of Life. The Game of Life. That was a big big hit with you guys because you got to spin the, the spinner from the middle of the board, but it was really like a big uh, merry-go-round, huh? Awesome. So we took this information, you know, that we studied about games and that we learned from spending time together at the museum. And what did we have to come back here and do? Make our own games. We had to make our own board games. Can any of you tell me about the process that you used or what your game turned out to be? For my game, um, I had um, a couple of friends um, and then, so we wrote on um, a board, 
and then like we draw a circle in the middle for the dice and we drew like these lines and stuff like it's like the center and the first one to the middle um wins oh could you compare it to another board game was it kind of like any other board games that you've seen before or was it completely unique um maybe like i forgot what it's called like with the dice in the middle and then you just like pop up trouble yeah yeah pop up trouble yep okay uh, how about you, gentlemen? Do you, do you remember anything specific about your games? Well, I remember I got inspired from the game of life and decided to make a game kind of like that called Bus Run. Basically, you play as a player here who's trying to go to the bus for you to go wherever you want. Meanwhile, it's an evil horse trying to take all your money for he to go wherever he wants to go. So it's just a big, giant fight to see who wins. Oh, interesting. So it's got a lot of elements of some different games in it. Awesome. And Omar, we had some other classmates create other games where they actually had to throw things. What were they throwing things at? Mm. Do you remember? Mm. Did we have little red cups and marbles to throw at them? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever try that game out? Mm. Yes? Great. So, as you can see, we've really explored who we are as players during this program. And uh, hopefully you all enjoyed that unit of study that we had this summer. Uh, do you have anything else that you'd like to add before we sign off? I, I would like to sign say something. Video games is a big part of my life because I love video games, like old video games and the new ones. So I'm super glad I got a chance to make my own video game and have fun. Um, I got a connection kind of like um I'm happy that we got to make our own like board games. It was fun. Nice. Alright, well thank you very much, gentlemen. This is the yes. Who We Are as Game Gamers and Players signing off. Welcome back for another segment of the Rock Explorers 2023 fifth grade podcast. It's me, Mr. Cornu, and I'm here with our next group who are here to talk about studying who we are as far as our heritage goes. Again, the previous group talked about who we are as players and gamers, but then we got a little bit deeper, didn't we, guys? Let me uh, have our podcasters introduce ourselves. First, we've got... My name is Cassandra. My name is Tristan. My name is Dazari. And I'm so happy to have all three of you here. Hopefully you'll speak up just a little bit more as we continue our conversation. So this, this week's unit was focused on a very famous woman that a lot of people have heard about. Who? Harry Tubman. I'm sorry, say that again? Harry Tubman. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman, that's right. And when we think of Harriet Tubman, what do we think about? Slavery. Oh, that's right, TJ. The first thing that comes to mind is the fact that she was an enslaved person uh, in, in our country's rough history of enslaving African people. But we learned some new things about Harriet Tubman during our week of study on her. What did we learn? that her family was African people. That's right. We often think about people who were enslaved as just enslaved people. And we don't think about the past, where they came from, who they came from. So not only did we learn that Harriet Tubman was African, but also that she was part of what tribe? The Ashanti? The Ashanti people, yes. What did we learn about the Ashanti people? The Ashanti. 
We learned that Harriet Tubman's ancestors came from the Ashanti people, which is uh, present day Ghana. What do they have a lot of in Ghana that that you might not think about? Gold. Yeah, that they're a wealthy people. We also uh, learned that their clothing is made of what, Cassandra? Kente cloth. A kente cloth. What, what is a kente cloth? A type of cloth that they made out of a lot of fabric that they had. And what could, how would you describe it? It's very what? Mm, like it has a lot of patterns and stuff in it and colors. Yeah, it's very colorful and very well patterned. And what do they make out of the kente cloth? I mean, they make a lot of things, but specifically... Dashiki. Yeah, and we were so fortunate. We went on a field trip uh, to World of Inquiry School 58 uh, with the Rochester Teacher Center. Tell us some of the things that, that we did there and some of the things that we saw there. TJ? Um, there was... Um, so we closed our eyes and the girl started playing a beat of a, a heartbeat on a drum. And it kind of felt like that's what my heart felt like. Interesting. And that heartbeat was meant to represent what? The heartbeat of our? Ancestors. Ancestors. That's right. And so after that drum beat, we were able to sort of feel more connected to our, our ancestors. ancestors. What did we learn about Africa? They were the first people on Earth. That they were the first people on Earth, that all humankind started on, Af uh, on the African continent, and then eventually people did what? They move. Yeah, they move to different parts of the country, right? Or different parts of the world, excuse me. So after uh, getting connected to our ancestry with that drum beat, what were you all able to try on? Dashikis and other types of clothes and hats. That's so cool. And, and then what did you get to see? A lot of stuff that were in Africa, like... Like the necklaces and earrings. Oh, so we saw some jewelry. We saw... A comb. Oh, some combs. And they had a, per a actual perfume that was made out of flowers in Africa. Fascinating. Yeah, it was really a beautiful exhibit of African artifacts. Uh, we're so fortunate to have the RTC Rochester Teacher Center with this collection uh, available to students to really try to connect you with your ancestry. How did you feel after that exhibit? I felt like I more knew about my knew more about my ancestors in Africa. TJ? I felt like um I felt like I learned a lot that I didn't know. Excellent. Sandra? I learned stuff I didn't even know in my life. Awesome. Well, again, we are so fortunate uh, to have experienced that. And again, now, hopefully, when you hear a name like Harriet Tubman, the first thing that you think about won't be slavery, right? The first thing that you will think about is... African. Her African ancestry heritage. and heritage, yeah. Wonderful. Well, folks, you've clearly learned a lot uh, this summer, and I appreciate your expertise on the podcast. Anything to add before we sign off? Mm. Always listen to your teachers because they know what they're talking about. I like that advice very much. Listen more to your teachers so you can get better education. You can make it. Excellent. Never make bad choices. All right. And it's okay to make bad choices. Sometimes we just have to learn from those mistakes, right? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much to our podcasters. This segment is signing off.
Welcome back to another segment of the Rock Explorers 2023 fifth grade podcast. We're here to talk about a phenomenal week of learning that we had with our friends at the Rochester Ecology Partners, which was a nonprofit organization that developed a curriculum for us to study uh, and learn more about who we are in connection to nature. So I'm here with my two podcasters. Jayara, Norma Jean. And these ladies uh, really appreciated this opportunity to connect with nature. Right, ladies? Yes. Yes. So tell me, what was something that we focused on during our week with the Rochester Ecology Partners? We... We we um, focused on soil, saving water, um, flowers, pollinators, and and our senses. We were focusing on nature. Yeah, absolutely. And so within nature, uh, as Jai pointed out, we kind of focused on the connection between water, soil, plants, and pollinators, right? Um, And so what did we learn about water? To not really waste it that much. Yeah, that it is an extremely valuable resource. What are some ways that we can save water? We can shower, we could take less time showering, we can, um, when we're brushing our teeth, we could turn it off when we're brushing, and when we're doing the dishes, don't, like when you're scrubbing, turn the water off. Yeah, those are great pieces of advice and things that I know after our conversations that week, I've been trying to be more conscious of. Just don't, like, water your flowers with extra water you have. Like, if you were drinking some water and you don't want to drink it anymore, don't dump it out. Just pour it for your uh, for your flowers or garden to drink, and also do not water your grass. Yeah, what a great uh, segue into our, our next topic, which would be those plants and pollinators, right? Yes. Which we know grow within good... We have to have good what in order to grow plants? Um, Sunlight, water, and um, pollinators. Okay, yes, and the soil, right? Yeah, soil. We looked at two different types of soil in one of our experiments. One was really dark and rich, and then the other one was what? Like sand. Just sand. And which kind of soil would be better to grow your plants in? The dark one. Yeah. it's. We talked about compost, right? Organic material. What did we find within the organic compost soil? We found rocks. We found um, wood chips. We found bugs. I was going to say, we found some pets, didn't we? <laughs> because we found bugs in the soil, and many of our, our classmates decided to make them their pets, huh? What kind of bugs did we find? Worms. We found a little centipede and other little bugs. Yeah, and what did we learn? Uh, why do we want worms in our soil? Because when they poop, they have um, this. They disposed um, nutrients. Nutrients. Yeah, into the soil, absolutely, which help the plants grow. And specifically, when we think about vegetables and fruits, we know that those are flowering plants, but that they're not going to do well without who? Without worms and other bugs. What kind of bugs did we we talk about next? Pollinators. That's right. And what do pollinators do? They grab pollen, like they eat the things on the flowers, and then, like, I think, I don't remember what it's called, and then they will go and get the pollen and then when they fly onto the other flower it w- they would grab some more pollen and leave some pollen so they will just fly around with pollen on in their pollen sack on their leg so then there will be like they will like grow more flowers excellent great explanation norma jean what were some examples of pollinators that we talked about jai um some pollinators um, eat the nectar from inside that um, 
What's the most famous pollinator that loves nectar and uses it to make honey? Honeybee. That's right. And so we learned about honeybees uh, gathering nectar, taking it back to their hive, which eventually turns it into honey, honey. Um, that, that we get to enjoy and that also keeps the hive alive, right? Yeah. Excellent. So for our field trip for this week's study, where did we go? Do you remember? We went to Ellison Park. Ellison Park. We're so fortunate to have this beautiful park uh, close by here in Rochester. What were some of the things that we did at Ellison? We found some toads, right? Mm -hmm. Toads and other bugs. I found a... Japanese beetle and it was beautiful. Very nice. Um, I found two bees. I found a yellow jacket and um, a honeybee, but I didn't catch it because they're supposed to just be. And um, I saw a worm. And that's it. I love what you just said, that the, the yellow jacket and the honeybee are just supposed to be, right? We, we talked about leaving nature alone, right? That we don't want to come into a park like Ellison and disturb nature. We just came to observe it, right? And I know that uh, we, we saw a couple different um, environments. We looked at uh, an old stump. What did the old stump have growing on it? Fungus. Oh yeah, fungus, that's right. And then we looked at the, the creek and looked for what kind of animals in the creek? Um, water striders. Yeah, an insect called a water strider, as well as fish, obviously, right? And then uh, we continued to, to look around the pavilion area for, again, pollinators and, and the toads that we found. So we really saw a lot of wildlife uh, around the park, didn't we? Yes. yes. Awesome. Um, so I guess I'm just curious, is there anything else that you would like to add about our week with the Rochester Ecology Partners? Well, we were tasting things with our five senses, like some tasting things. We were smelling some things, and we were hearing things. I'm so glad that you brought that up, Norma Jean, because as scientists, right, it's really important for us to use all of our senses, and we had an opportunity to try out some different things. Jai, I know you were uh, an expert with the scent experiment. I think we had to smell three different scents, and you were able to identify all three of them. What was the one that only you got and nobody else could identify? Eucalyptus. And why did you identify eucalyptus just by, with your nose? Because um, we went flower picking, me and my mom, and we found eucalyptus, and I had the scent, out and it smells really good. So when I cut it, I like let it dry out, and it helps the smell more and the like the oil. Beautiful. Yeah, it was uh, such a cool experiment. And what was your favorite thing that we tasted, Norma Jean? It has to be the blueberries, and I don't really like blueberries, so that says some things. Interesting, because it was a freeze-dried blueberry, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so it did change the flavor. We learned that uh, by freeze-drying fruit, you can really adjust the texture and the flavor of it. And it was kind of tricky to identify those flavors once they were freeze-dried. Well, ladies, it's clear that you really learned a lot during our week with the Rochester Ecology Partners, and we're, we're grateful to them for all the experiences they provided. Uh, thank you so much. This is the Nature, Who I Am in Nature Group, signing off. Goodbye. Welcome to the final segment of the Rock Explorers 2023 podcast. I'm here with Jay Riley and Tanaya. And we are focused on our topic from the final week of the program, which uh, is about one of my personal heroes. Who are we here to talk about today, Jay Riley? Roberto Clemente. That's right. And Roberto Clemente uh, is known for a lot of things. First of all, let's talk about his heritage. Where did uh, Roberto Clemente come from? Puerto Rico. That's right. And and Jerry Lee, as a Boricua, 
What can you tell us about Puerto Rico? You've been there before. Um, Puerto Rico is a beautiful place to go, and the food is very good. How many times have you been there? About four or five. And you go and visit family there? Yeah. What else do you do when you're down there besides uh, enjoy the beautiful scenery and the delicious food? Um, sometimes me and my family, we stay home or we go and visit my grandma. Very nice. We go shopping. Excellent. And I'm curious, were you aware of Roberto Clemente before we, we started this unit? Did you know about him? I know a little bit about him. Yeah, because he is one of the most famous Puerto Ricans in the world. Tonight, what made uh, Roberto Clemente so famous? What was he known for? He was known for the best baseball player. Yeah, he was an excellent baseball player. Um, Not the first Latinx baseball player in the major leagues, but definitely one of the best ever. Um, And he was very proud of his Puerto Rican heritage, wasn't he? Um, We learned through our studies that not everybody felt as good about his uh, heritage as he did. Can we talk a little bit about that? What, What did he face? He faced a lot of people being mean to him because of his accent. That's right. They would... Uh, the news reporters would sort of pick on his uh, accent. They had a hard time pronouncing his name. In fact, they didn't even call him Roberto. They called him Bob, Bob, which is just, you know, an American sort of abomination for the the Hispanic version, Roberto Clemente. Um, what what was Roberto's life like when he was growing up? Um, He was... He didn't have a lot of money. That's right. So he had to kind of make his own stuff to teach himself how to play baseball. Like he used a a stick for a bat. He used an old can for a ball. But despite those challenges, we know that he went on to become one of the most prolific uh, baseball players. Um, What was he known for as far as his baseball goes? Do you remember? One time he hit um, a three... 300 or 3,000, I think. That's right. He had 3,000 hits in the major leagues. And he finished his career with those 3,000 hits, even though he probably could have played longer. What happened to him, Tania? So um, he was he sent supplies to a... Earthquake victims? Yeah, earthquake victims. And it wouldn't send. He sent it twice, but it didn't go to where he wanted to to go so he decided to go on to playing with the supplies but it was like a very old old plane and he didn't survive because the plane one of the things either caught on fire i think and it fell into the water in some of his puerto rico um i think or his peoples, um, they um, waited for him to come out the water, but he did it, and his body was never found. Wow, yeah, it's a very sad story of uh, a man who believed in helping others however he could. Uh, He had a very famous quote, if you have an opportunity to help somebody on this earth and you don't, you are wasting your time. So we know that uh, Roberto Clemente believed in helping others. What are some ways that we can help other people in our own lives? If people need help, like, on making something, you could help them if you know how to do it. Great. And if people is homeless, you could probably give them some money or food if they need it. For sure. If you have something to give and, and, you know, can spare it, that's a great way to support others. What are some ways that we can help out our families? By helping around the house. What do you do to help out around the house, Tania? The dishes. Yeah, me too. That's one of my jobs. How about you, Jerry Um, I clean the house. Yeah, do a lot of cleaning. Well, yeah, those, those are ways that we can contribute to our family. And then you talked about some ways that we can contribute to our community. What about school? How can we contribute to our school community? Listen to the teachers and 
focus on your work. Pay attention in class. And no talking. <laughs> well, not no talking. You're allowed to talk sometimes, right? Like if you're recording a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, ladies, uh, thank you so much for providing some background information on Roberto Clemente. Um, again, as uh, an employee of Roberto Clemente School Number 8, I am very proud uh, to study him. You have something to add? Go for it. And on his 12th time, I think it said, he received a Golden Glove Award. Yeah, he received the Gold Glove Award a couple different times. He won the World Series a couple times. Yeah, Jerry. Also, Roberto Clemente played for the Pittsburgh Pirates 17 years. Yeah, that's true. He, he played for the Pirates his entire career, 17-year career, um, again, bringing them to two World Series victories. And uh, he was also inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame um, shortly after his death. Usually there's a five-year wait before that happens, but they made an exemption for him, so he is in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Well, thank you again, ladies, for all this wonderful information about Roberto Clemente and Jared Lee for the information about Puerto Rico. I really hope to travel there someday myself, uh, so um, I'll know what to look for thanks to you. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you, ladies. We are signing off. I am a leader.